Hello, St. Luke family, St. Luke friends, our well wishes. This is the day that the Lord has made, and I will rejoice and be glad in, in the day. Amen. This is Pastor Johnson. We're here at the St. Luke Christian Church in Huntsville, Alabama, where God is with us seeking, God is with us seeking to save. It's just good to be able to be with you in this hour. We're back in live service now at 9.30, 9.30 only on Sunday. We are here worshiping. We're here with the women on, uh, celebrating women on last uh, Sunday. We thank God for uh, the words, shall we dance, which reflects upon looking back over our life and thinking of what good things God has done for us, and God, the mercy God has bestowed upon us. God has not given us what we deserve. In fact, were it not for his great mercy for me, amen, I would be consumed. And today is time for our prayer and, and, and our midweek prayer. And certainly we need to pray for um, several. And we shall pray for the Rice's, the Rice family and the, their loss, and for uh, Sister Chapman's family and that, that loss, for those who are sick, those who are convalescing, and those who are a shut in. Uh, I'm going to pray for them. We're going to pray for the world that God's own is God's. He made it. Pray that the Lord um, will, will enter in, come amongst us, and, and help us to navigate amen, what's happening in our world. Those in harm's way in war, I want to pray uh, for them. Pray for the mind of our, our young ones, our, our young ones who are. Uh, on their way to school or in school, just starting school back, praying for protection and um, um, hedge of protection around them in, in this COVID environment as well. And from those things that happen, has been happening in school due to gun violence, we want to ask God to please, Father, protect our babies. Um, also, their mind, um, their, what they um, are digesting by way of information, especially as it relates to uh, the church. Our young people don't know that they've always been a negative by They've always been uh, rogue um, preachers and speakers and leaders. They've always been uh, forever in the church. We must, I mean, even in Israel, when Jesus come, he called the Pharisees hypocrites. He, he called he called them, them hypocrites. He called them um, showing out he called them uh, people who put burdens on others and they won't bear those burdens themselves uh, he calls them they had made his father's house a den of thieves they were robbing people so this uh, information that you're hearing uh, about a church over here or a church over there or a church over there don't forget the churches that are have authentic uh, called caring, kind, and concerned people at the helm trying to affect those who uh, make up the church and those communities that the church lives in. Don't, 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 don't think that everyone is a shyster. That's the information they get on their little devices. And it's time for us to fight back in that regard. It's time for us to put some stuff out. Everyone not, not out there for Gucci or, or Movado or, or your money. Everyone not out there uh, using the money that you give to uh, buy big cars, big houses, go on a fancy trip. That's a small fragment, a very, very small slice of what's happening. And the issue is it has been happening. It didn't just start happening. Since the days of Jesus, even he talked about the Pharisees. It's been happening. And we can um, assess it easier now because of these devices, the modern devices that we have. I don't think this is new. I'm, oh, oh I, no, it's not new. Don't let anybody fool you. Um, and, and the way people are making uh, making jokes, and there are a number of things that have been said that I've taken issue with. I understand a comedian said, um, adds doubt to Christianity based upon Jesus' instruction, that is to love your enemy, the, the the brother I heard, I heard, I didn't hear him say this, but a comedian allegedly said, you're not, you know, loving your enemy. So, man, you need to hate your enemy. Jesus had a deeper lesson. 
It's through the love that I've demonstrated toward people who didn't like me that changed them, not me. They they didn't have they couldn't uh, they couldn't criticize my Christianity because I hit hate for hate. When Jesus says love your enemies, he also says, "What do you do better than anyone else if you only speak to those who treat you right? If you only." Interact with those who treat you right. If you only do good for those who treat you, you haven't done anything. They're doing the same thing. You know better than they are. He says, love your enemy. Do good to those who, uh, dis who use you. Bless them that curse you. It sounds crazy, but there's a there's a method to the madness. This, this puts you on the level of what Christianity really is. So, so a lot of things that our young people and people in general are encountering give them reason to recall from this idea of the church or the idea of God. A lot of people who are in church now don't even believe in God. Or Holy, there is a Holy Spirit. Just don't believe it. You have to read some of the, down in some of the reports. Church is just a racket in some places. But when you teach the Bible, and that's the thing you got to, when you teach out of this Bible, this Bible is like a two-edged sword. It's going to affect the person with the sword. When it comes back, the one edge is going to get the person who's wailing it, and the other edge. And, and when, you, when, you, when you do it right, it hurts the speaker. It hurts the, it, it shapes the speaker and the preacher as much as it does uh, the audience or the congregation. So anyway, that wasn't what I was going. Wasn't what I was going to pray. It's time for us to pray. This is the day that the Lord has made. Rejoice with me. I want you to gather in your places of quietness, places of meditation. I want you to focus on God through your understanding of Jesus. Not that picture that you see, but God through your understanding of, of Jesus who loved us so much, who leaves glory, comes to where we are, wherever we are, let us know that the Father loves us. Then shows us, show us that love by the ultimate sacrifice. I want, you, I want to focus on God in that image. In that image. As we come to the, to the altar. Before the presence of the living God creator of all the universe. Existence wouldn't be had you not orchestrated. Thank you, God. In, in your presence, there's liberty. In your presence, there's peace. In your presence, there's joy. Oh, Lord, our God, how excellent is your name. In all the earth at all times, you are Jehovah. We come in the name of of Jesus in your presence right now Father in heaven let your will be done in all things have your way you are our Father and you know what's best because you're Father we know that you love us because you're God we know that you're able to help us and keep us and hold us and provide for us and if you don't move the mountain Lord give us the mountain climbing strength Father, let your will be done. Have your way in all things, oh God. Let your will be done. And we know that when your will is done, we may have to cry some. We may have to stay up some. We may have some issues. But let your will be done because we realize that when your will is done, it's best for us. Let your name be glorified in the words, the works, and the ways of Jesus Christ. Help us, God, to learn of him through study of the Gospels ourselves. To, to take on gospel study ourselves, to see Jesus, see how he's humble, see how he comes through uh, the worst part of the town and the lowest and the most humble people, God. And reaches out to all. Let your name be glorified. Your name is glorified in Jesus, in his words, in his ways, in his works. Father, give us that we need today to glorify you, whatever the resources are, God. Where there are shortages, you are a provider. 
Do it in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. So, Father, have us to understand that um, many of us are asking for things we don't need. Teach us to want to have so we can help someone else. So, Father, now I, I ask that you forgive us our sin as we forgive others who sin against us and lead us not into temptation. But deliver us from the evil one, for you are the kingdom, the power, O oh God. All glory and all honor belongs to you. You are God. You're God all by yourself, God. We thank you for being real. There's someone struggling with that question of your realness, God. And they can't see the situations that you took them through before as evidence to who you are. M many people think they've made it on their own, on their own will, on their own might, they, they think that uh, I went to work and I earned the money, I bought the house. They don't realize how many people went to work, didn't earn the money to afford the house. So God, sometimes we, we ask that, that people learn to give you the credit, God. But Father, I, I pray for an encounter. There are some people just struggling, God. They can't rationalize how bad things are, how you being God who loves us, and you being God who have all power, but you won't change it. And good people hurt, babies die, families die, are killed, maimed, bad guys seem to get away. People are allowed to hate and go into your house and see your plan to your crime. And it seems like you don't move, God. People, people doubt. God, I pray for an encounter. Give them an encounter. Like you did me, God, give them an encounter. Give them something to let them know that you are God. So, so helpless in some cases because your word has told us that it is, it is impossible. It's impossible without faith to even come to you. So, God, um, we pray for those who don't believe and they base it upon certain social and certain worldly things. God, I pray for our young people who are inundated with so much information that's anti-God and so much washed down, watered down, God. God, I pray you help us to figure out how we can bring them to understand that you don't have any walls. You are God. It allows all in, but there's an expectation through the preaching of the word and the teaching of the word that there'll be change. You're a holy God. You're a holy God. You are a holy God. And your, your word teaches us what holiness is. You're a holy God. You're a holy God. And you want your people to be a holy people, a clean people. Loving people, God, I pray right now for those who are bereaved. I pray for the Chapman family, Betty's family. I pray that you hold them in the very hollow of your hand. I pray for Denise and, and Malcolm and, and, and Michael and, and the grandbabies, God, and the loss of Brother Elias. God, I pray right now that you hold them and, 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 and shepherd them through this time. Surely sense him in the loss of her son, Daniel, God. I just ask you to hold, hold her. Hold her. The loss of her son, Marcel, um, and his sister, God. I pray for her. I pray for the family as well. God, I pray that to come to understand that the little one is in your hands will help. And, and our Father, I pray for those under the sound of my voice who are experiencing anxiety of the time, troubled by the troubles of the world. God, I pray that you turn them to the passage which gives the instruction that not our hearts be troubled because this thing, this matter, is in your hands and you got some mighty good, mighty big, mighty powerful. Teach us how to lay in your hand and trust you, God. 
pre-fall marriages everywhere and saying you've got pre-fall marriages, God. Uh, I pray for marriages. I pray for those who are single and trying to live for you. Let them know that everything don't go. Let them not compromise in the name of Jesus. Let them not be ashamed to be who they are and represent you wherever they are. We say thank you, God. We give you glory, honor, and praise. Bless Mount Olive. Bless St. Luke in a certain thing. We just thank you for what you've already done. Thank you, Lord. Bless those that serve with us in leadership, each of them, God. Every family group leader, every tribal leader, God. Every deacon, every deaconess, every mother, God. Every minister, God, help us to come and struggle with how to serve in this present age, God. Not to be satisfied or comfortable, but how to serve. Then teach us how to serve in COVID, God. So, so many are using excuses for not coming to the form of fellowship of our tradition. Because it's easier to stay. It's, it's easier to stay. It's easier to be at home and watch. When the word says, forsake not this sin, God, help us. Help us. We need you, Lord. God, never forget those who are on the battlefield in harm's way. We pray for peace in the world. Now, Father, in all things, have your way. Let your will be done. We'll be careful to give you all the glory, the honor, and all the praise. In Jesus' name, amen, 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 amen. Listen, we have a very, very short word. God's just good. God is just good all the time. And we say that things aren't good all the time. Situations aren't good all the time. The stuff we have to deal with, negotiate with, press on through, we're not good. But God is good uh, all the time. I word, a short word from the 118th uh, Psalm, Psalm 118. Psalm 118 is a um, Psalm of David. I think it's a Psalm of David. Remember when you're dealing with Psalm, the Psalm is um, the worship book. They used many of these sayings. Some when they were traveling up to the temple, others when they were leaving the temple, and others when they were at the temple um, in they were singing some of these, some of the reciting some of these particular songs of how good the Lord is. Now, in the psalm, you'll understand that some of the things they suggest and say about God are part of their worldview. Things that we want God to do sometimes are not things that God actually does, but they're part of our worldview. I mean, if you read the Psalms long enough, you would suggest that God hates someone, which would violate this idea that God loves us all. So when, when we think of the Psalms, we have to think of it from as what it is. It is. Uh, ancient culture Hebrew worshiping Yahweh some of the terminology um, that said of God that God is on my side and against everyone else you read passages it sounds it sound like that on my side as opposed to someone else of course David we would be talking about a believer versus a non-believer. Or he who was a part of the tribe of Israel, which was called to um, show God to the rest of the nations. <clears throat> Israel's role was to let the world know who God was. To, to, to live so God could live among them. 
and guide them to be a light for the rest of the world. Oh my God. They were to live under the leadership of God with the presence of God among them to be a light for nations around them to show them who God is. They failed miserably <coughs> because they wanted to be like the world and not like God. And we have to be careful of that. But in Psalm 118, here's a word I want to share with you today. Verse 18. I'm going to start at verse 18. I may not use it, but I want to start at verse 18 in 118. 118. Starting at 18. The Lord has chastened me and whipped, <coughs> disciplined. He's Chastened me sore, but he has not given me over unto death. Open to me the gates of righteousness, and I will go into them and will praise the Lord. This gate of the Lord into which the righteous shall enter, I will praise thee, for thou hast heard me and art become my salvation. The stone which the builders refuse is become the head of the stone of the corner, or become the headstone of the corner. This is the Lord's doing. It is marvelous in our sight. This is the day which the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. And the thing I'll pick up on in this passage for you and someone to help you is this is the day that the Lord has made. And you know, I'm thankful to tell you that every day is not a good day, but every day is not a bad day either, but every day is a day that the Lord has made. When you read this day, understand that it is foreshadowing Jesus, it's foreshadowing redemption, Therefore, it's foreshadowing persecution and pain and hurt. It's also foreshadowing victory. And so, whatever God allows to be on your day, in your day, um, always be willing to say that this is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice. Because I know that God made the day and God evaluated the day. He previewed the day. He, he previewed the day before he hit the sent button to send it forward. Sometimes making financial transactions, when you're doing transactions from your account, it asks well, what account from and what account to or where to. And they get it all together and it gets a sign say, preview it before you hit send. God previews our day before he hits sin. He uh, looks at the day, looks at what's happening in the day, uh, and, and, and then God orchestrates the day in a way that it, you can handle. And it may, doesn't mean it won't hurt, doesn't mean it won't be pain, doesn't mean it won't give you anxiety or try to push you toward depression or doubt that God is with you, which is the important thing I've noticed about life, and I've noticed about life with God. Things come about to test the genuine nature of your faith. The trials come to see if your faith, and not for God, but for you to see where your faith really is. I was talking to someone just recently, talking about how people, um, come and are committed to everything that the church does and, 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 and to look at them and to listen to them they're rooted and grounded in Christ and I have to be careful with that because when a crisis comes see a crisis will come and test your Christ likeness 
and, and we know this, we know this, it's um, understandably easy uh, to praise God when things are going well. To say, oh, thank you, Jesus, hallelujah, glory to the King. Speak in our tongues. It's easy when the light bill is paid, the mortgage is paid. It's easy when our children are behaving and, 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 and respecting and respectful. It's easy when our jobs are secure and the income um, is enough to get all the bill paid. It's easy when we're getting along well behind those closed doors called home. It's easy to bless the Lord. In fact, at that point, let me hold there and say, if all of those things I just said are happening in your life right now, shall we dance? You ought to be giving God some praise in this day because another day is coming. Now, this is the day that you will declare that God has made, that all things are good. Money is good. Job is good. You know, social interactions are good. Relationships. This is the day that God has made, and I agree. And I believe we should dance right there. Yeah, dance right there. But another day is coming, and that day is when darkness and trials and trouble and tribulation come. The devil didn't make that day. It's a day that God made and understand the day in this way. And when God made a day, he checked it out before he sent it. And whatever gets to you, you can handle it. You just got to realize that this is the day that God has made. In this day, it's shadowing Jesus. Look at what uh, some of what uh, David, uh, the writer here says, I'm, he's whipped me. The Lord has chastened me in verse 18, but but not unto death. Not unto death. He, he's chastened me, but not un, unto death. Amen. Whom God love, he chastises uh, all, all of us. He, he chastises. He said, um, but if you open the, ghost, the gates of righteousness, I'll go in and we'll praise the Lord. It, it, it's Understand that when the Lord has disciplined us, he's disciplined us, and we will be better. How many of us can say um, that it was the discipline as we grew that made us, um, for, for some of us, kept us out of jail, kept us out of the streets, kept us out of harm's way, kept us out of car accidents, kept us from getting pregnant, kept us from making babies, kept us, kept us, kept us. It was discipline. It was a chastisement that made us better. And when the Lord chastises us, and sometimes when the Lord chastises you don't know why. You go, why in the world am I going through this? But the Lord just want to make you, make you better. It's not, unto, it's not to kill you. It's to make you, make you better. And notice what he says. If you open the gate, I'm still going in and praise. And this portion of scripture in Psalms reflects uh, the days of Jesus Christ. It's used in the gospel where it says, oh, blessed day to come in the name of the Lord, uh, where it says this is the stone that the builders uh, refused or wouldn't accept, tried to throw away or tried to break, uh, treat it bad. God, God made the day. Now, this is the day that the Lord has made, the day that Jesus was to be born uh, by a virgin and criticized and ostracized by the religious uh, people and leaders, looked down upon by those who call themselves gods and godly, preached uh, a itinerant preacher in uh, the rural sides of Galilee, went to where the poor or the needed, the least, the lost, and left out and preached the love of God while the big shot Pharisees, Sadducees, and the lawyers all hated him or hunted him to, to make things hard for him. God made that day as well. That day was a chastisement of the Lord. It was the discipline of Jesus that he wouldn't lose his temper, that he would stay focused on what he 
uh, had come to do. Many of us don't realize that the trouble that comes our way comes to take us off focus, to distract us from what all the stuff you're hearing online about how bad the preachers are and on either side. You can go so many different ways with that. You can go uh, to, to the, the, the celebrities who are just acting preachers and just fleecing people. You can go from the, the right wing, uh, white national who are preaching. Hey, you can go you can go so many different ways, and, and don't let that distract you off the reality. This is the day that the Lord has made because Paul says in the book to Timothy, in the last days perilous times shall come, they shall pile up a whole lot of teachers who will tell them what they want to hear and make them feel good about themselves and their sin. And we're in a place right now where as pulpit, as preachers, the world is trying to get us to throw uh, God's holiness out the window. God's cleanness, God's requirement for clean hearts, clean hands. God's requirement for us to walk in a straight and a narrow way. God's requirement for us to love, not hate anyone. God's requirement for us to be an example of what right is by our living, our conduct, our behavior and our actions. This day is the day God has made. God knew this day was coming. He said, I will rejoice and be glad in the day. And whatever the day brings, whatever the day is bringing you, you gotta say, this is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice. A few weeks ago, I talked about the, don't participate with your problem. And, and, and Jesus didn't participate with the fact that he had to deal with the naysayers, with the those who were against him, those who wanted to kill him, he still treated uh, them right. He didn't get downhearted, didn't get discouraged. And for us so often, uh, when we get a day we don't like, we participate with the music of that day. So the day is depressed, so we get depressed. I, I've learned how to praise God when things trying to pull me down. I learned how to, uh, I've learned how I've learned how how to just thank the Lord and praise God. Give God praise on that day. Not let my bad day spill over and make someone else have a bad day. I, you know, no, you, just because things are going to see God made this day. I can endure this day and I don't have to, I don't have to make someone else's day better because I won't participate with my bad day. It's a day that the Lord has made. And now the Lord is using the day to make me a better me for him, to glorify him. This is the day. It can be tragic. It can be tearful. It can be hurting. But this is the day that the Lord has made. This is our will. Our will mean I may not want to. We don't want to because things have not happened that are happy, which is akin to praise. But the Lord deserves to be praised regardless of what happens. Things happen to make you stop praising. I'm going to close on this. I got to remind you in the earlier Psalms where the psalmist says these words, uh, God inhabits, Yahweh inhabits, the Lord inhabits the praise of his people and Regardless of what's pulling you down, don't don't do not put off praise. Regardless of what's trying to tear you down, don't put off praise. Don't let your situation make your praise go silent because God inhabits, He dwells in the praise of His people. And so when you're able to praise, even though you're hurting, even though you're in pain, even though your mind is confused, even though you've been thrown out, put out, talked about, when you learn how to God, this is the day you made. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I will rejoice, oh God. In the big kind of tell something else. It's not just what others do that cause trouble. Sometimes we do things ourselves. We're our own worst enemy. Sometimes we um, 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 make bad decisions and we find a bad day. A bad decision can make a bad day. The, 
but the salsa said here, uh, mentioned repenting. I don't care how the bad day come about. If you can move to the idea of this is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice. I'll be glad in the day. I'm going to give God praise in the day. God inhabits the praise of his people. The day we are in, this divisiveness, this stuff on every platform, on every channel, on every screen, on the screaming, on every device, this stuff all just coming at you. This is the day that the Lord has made. He's built you to make you better. The stone that the builders refused. When it looked like you would be nothing in the building, not even used in the building, it becomes the chief cornerstone. And the chief cornerstone is that which guides the laying of the rest of the stones in the building. They lay the rest of the stone off the chief cornerstone, the one that they refused, the one that they didn't want to be in place. I said, and if you talk about Jesus, uh, this barefoot from Nazareth, this poor boy from the country, this 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 non-graduate of the theological seminary, the, 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 the become the head of the corner so that others could line up off him. Be careful what you are lining up, what you're lining up off. Be careful when people tell you it's going to be uh, bright sunshine. It's not all the time. That, that if you give me $12, I'm going to get you $24. Be, be careful about all of that. This is the day. This is the day that the Lord has made. Rejoice. And I'm not going to say feel good. Tell the Lord, thank you, God. God, I thank you for the time I had with my loved ones, the things they imparted and things I learned from them in whatever was short or long length of time. I thank you, God. The devil meant it for bad, but thank you, God. I know you received my love. This is the day that the Lord has made. There's so many people angry at God, walked away from God because of a death of a loved one, a child, a mother, a dear friend. Just got angry at God because people told him it was the will of the Lord. No, no, no. God was there to receive your loved one. And Jesus explains it and said, I go to prepare a place for you. And where I am there, you may be also. And if I go, I'll come and I'll receive you unto myself. We thank God for this word. This day, my brother. This day, my sister. Beloved, this is the day that the Lord has made. Rejoice. Be glad in the day. Whatever your day has been, this is the day you have an opportunity to give your life to Jesus Christ, our Savior. The one who sets us free. The one who walks with us and talks with us. The miracle worker in our life worked things out that we don't know how to get out of. Amen. Thank you, Lord. If you want to become a part of that faithful people, crew you can do that if you've never been baptized never given your life to Christ you can do that today and all you have to do is just repeat after me and say say Lord I'm a sinner I need a savior I accept the Lord Jesus Christ as my dead buried and resurrected savior I ask Jesus, come into my heart, own me as his child. Amen. 
If he did that, we welcome you to the household of faith, to the body of Christ, to the role on earth and in heaven. Go on the website, uh, follow the join in and send us your information and we'll reach out to you to get you formally connected. If you've already been baptized, but you want to worship and fellowship with the St. Luke Christian Church, you can do that. Go on the website, give us your name, your information, and we'll reach out to make you formally connected as well. Listen, this is the day. Thank you, Jesus, that the Lord has made. Let's rejoice. I will rejoice. Push yourself to rejoice. Be glad in it. Be blessed.